Okay, let's go ahead now and create our child record for our project record that we created earlier. So just as before, we're going to follow the same process. We're going to create a new custom record type, but this time it's going to become the child record of that project record. So let's go with company project milestone. Again, we should be giving unique IDs. I'm going to skip over that again for time's sake. Um, let's keep the rest of the settings here real simple. I'm not going to modify any of those. We've already covered that. Um, let's go ahead and save this now. And then we are going to add um, some fields to this record. So company project milestone, the additional um, tabs are added. And now we can go ahead and um, create some custom fields for our project milestone. So any milestone should um, have a name. So milestone name, I would say as a free text. Okay, well, that's loading. Let's go ahead and add a milestone target date. That should be a date field. Let's go ahead and add a milestone actual date. It will also be a date field. And now we want to confirm if the milestone is actually complete. Milestone. So in this case, we want this to be a checkbox. Perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and create one more custom field, and this is going to be the key one. This is how we link this custom record as a child record of the parent company project record. So we're going to call this field company project uh, record. And now we're going to go to our list record and find our company project record. And now what's important to do um, on the right hand side, you'll notice that this record is parent checkbox was previously grayed out. It was not available. It's now available because we have selected a record that we can um, we can select as a parent record here. So let's go ahead and check that box. And now we can determine, um, okay, on our parent record, uh, which sub tab should, um, should this particular field appear on? We want it to appear on the project milestones tab. So let's go ahead and do that and save. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually jump into our company project custom record and let's go ahead and create a new record. Okay, so on the new company project record, let's go ahead and give this project a name. Let's go with test company project one. And we can give the project title the same name again. We should probably remove the name um, field at this point. We can go ahead and give the project a description and choose a project manager. For now, let's just go ahead and save. So once we have saved um, the parent record, Notice now that we have access to the sub tab that we created before for our project milestones. And from here, we can go ahead and create a new company project milestone, one of the child records. So now let's go ahead and give this milestone a name. This milestone one. Let's say the target date is 1 2023. The actual date isn't complete yet, and the milestone is not complete. Notice there is a direct link back to the parent record being the company project. Let's go ahead and save and copy, because now we're going to create a second milestone um, with a new date. So now coming back to our company project, the parent record, when we click on our project milestones, you will notice that we have the two milestones here. We can customize the view on this record to display the additional fields, such as the start date, the actual date, and whether that milestone um, is actually complete or not. So as you can see, this is kind of the process that you follow to create a parent um, custom record in the system. 
as well as a related um, child record in the system. And as you can see, we've created a very basic um, kind of project management tool here. I wouldn't recommend using this, obviously. There's lots of you know, um, solutions out there when it comes to project management, but I think you get the idea that you know, there's really an infinite number of ways that you can customize NetSuite. So if you haven't already played about um, with custom records in the system, or if you've used them lightly, I, I would challenge you to jump back into the system Think about some use cases that might be applicable to your company and, and test them out and see if you run into any challenges, see if you solve some problems. And I think you'll find um, once you've done that, that you'll go back to custom records going forwards and find many different uses for them. Thank you very much.